Hi, uh, I'm Tomislav Galjanic, and welcome back to the lecture on supervised machine learning. Uh, in this lecture, we will be focusing on one of the explainable classifiers, the decision trees. Uh, the example we'll cover in this lecture, you can also follow in the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, I will go over those examples as well in the last lecture of this series. So let's get started with decision trees. And we'll get started by looking at an example. Um, an example is, um, suppose that we want to predict if somebody is going to buy a pet, that's our Y variable, given four features in our input matrix X. And uh, the four features, as you can see, are black, furry, small, and active. So uh, we basically have some features and we have some uh, output variable Y. And we would like to uh, basically see if some of our features are better at predicting our output variable y, and if so, then you know which one are those. Uh, to be able to better answer that question, uh, we may look at the association of each of one of our features with the output variable y. So uh, what we're per in particular looking at is uh, if our uh, in feature variable is true, is the y variable also true? If our feature variable is false, is the y var variable as well false? Those will be basically all uh, correct predictions of our feature variable. So if you look at uh, specifically at the, uh, the leftmost corner with uh, association of black with Y, we see that a black feature correctly predicts Y four out of five times. What about the other ones? Uh, the other features basically at most uh, predict uh, the Y variable three times correctly. So based on this uh, limited analysis, we could conclude that maybe black is uh, the best feature to predict our uh, output variable Y. And if we go ahead and do that, then uh, what we may do next is to split our data set in the, um, uh, into smaller data sets based on the feature uh, black. So we would have one table at the top where black feature is equal to true, and another table at the bottom where black feature is equal to false. So here, uh, what we can see is that when the black feature is true, that Y variable is always one. And so uh, this seems like it's a, you know, it's a, it's a perfect prediction. So if, uh, if a uh, pet is black, then it looks like the purchase would be yes. What about the bottom table? Well, if the pet is not black, we see that uh, the, the picture is not as clear, that is, in two of the three cases, pet could not be purchased, but in one of the cases, it would. So what we may uh, want to look at this point uh, is whether there is another feature that may be useful uh, in predicting why, given that the pet is not black. And uh, if we uh, focus a little bit more on the data, we can actually figure out that that feature is small. Why small? Well, because uh, when small is one, y variable is one. When small is zero, y variable is zero. So uh, if, the, if the pet is not black, we see that small is uh, the best uh, feature that can help us predict our output variable y. Okay, so let's summarize what we talked about uh, through a little flow chart. Uh, we have uh, looked at our training data and we have tried to see how the features impact the output variable y. Um, and so what we ended up doing is we first looked at whether the pet is black. If it is, uh, based on our training data, we would then say, hey, you know, this is uh, a predictor that uh, the, the pet would be purchased. But if the pet is not black, then we would look at whether the pet is small. And if it is, then we could also conclude that a purchase would happen. And if it's not small in it's neither black, then we would say that a uh, pet will not be purchased. So by looking at our training data, we were able to design a little flow charts. And this flow chart we can now use to evaluate any, any uh, test cases. So if we get new data point with the same uh, four features, uh, well, just by looking at those features, we can go down this tree and determine whether uh, a pet would be, uh, would be uh, purchased or not based again on our training data set. So uh, this flow chart is really nothing but a decision tree. Okay. So uh, let's look at next uh, what a decision tree uh, looks like in scikit-learn. So that's the, the Python package. 
uh, that um, is uh, very useful in building decision trees. You can see on the left-hand side of the screen, we have code for building the, the decision tree classifier. Um, I will not go into more details here because we will cover this uh, more in the last lecture in, in Python notebook. Uh, on the right-hand side though, you can see that we have a decision tree that is built uh, using, again, our same uh, data set as on previous slides. And, and you can see that this tree is pretty much the same. Uh, you have uh, singular information about uh, the splits that were made, black at the top, small at the bottom. You see the leave notes. Uh, the leave notes basically uh, tell us uh, the, uh, the majority class. And when we do prediction, they will tell us you know, how to evaluate a new uh, test data point. So, um, very much the same as on the previous slides. Uh, and uh, uh, now let's summarize quickly what we learned about the decision trees. Um, so uh, a decision tree is basically a simple flow chart that help us decide uh, what class uh, an item belongs to. Uh, we, um, we come up with a decision tree by using training data. We start off at the root. And then we potentially have some intermediate nodes below the root, at which uh, point we perform some splits of the data. We do it uh, basically in a way that we uh, try to find a feature uh, and a certain condition on the feature that would help us clarify uh, in, in, in what conditions uh, would uh, our, our, uh, our output variable y be uh, of one class versus another class. And we continue doing that until uh, we reach some sort of a terminating point. One of those points, of course, is if we have no more uh, data to split, meaning that all of the data points belong to the same class. Um, alternatively, we can stop uh, growing the tree even before that. And in which case our leaf nodes will just have a majority of one class. And we will just go ahead and use that majority as the, um, as the, um, as the prediction for the class uh, for all of the the, the future uh, evaluations of uh, test data points. Okay, we looked at the uh, scikit-learn as well, and we, we saw that it's uh, fairly straightforward to use, and it's producing the type of trees uh, that we saw in our in our slide earlier. However, we do want to want to know more about these trees, and what we have done here is just kind of informally define what they are. Uh, and now, in the next session, we will actually go ahead and more formally uh, defined decision trees and uh, how they are built.